Hello, uh, this is my face and uh, this is my voice. You, you already know my voice, but uh, today we have a little bit different setting because it's from my phone. Uh, anyway, let's start with the questions. Lukas Melgar Petersen asks, what made you start your YouTube channel? Well, uh, my friend finished his uh, university studies, his history studies in the university and realized that uh, there is no decent deployment here where we live uh, uh, with that kind of credentials. So he's decided to start the YouTube channel instead. And now here I am, his friend, uh, doing the narration for the channel. Uh, by the way, uh, this is me reading the script. This is uh, actual, we, we have the questions and also answers. These are not coming the, off the top of my head. But, uh, so this is what you get. Uh, Michael Wan asks, what do you want to say to us? Well, Michael Wan, I want to say to you, thank you for watching the, <laughs> for watching our YouTube channel and, uh, you know, making it possible for us to earn a living doing uh, weird things like this. You know, it's pretty cool. So thank you, sincerely, thank you, thank you everyone for this. Solomon von Rajalin asks, uh, what software do you use to make your videos? Also, how do your uh, fami family members feel about you making historical YouTube videos? So, we use Blender for animation. Everybody says it's like not very conventional choice, but we, we do it with Blender. Uh, we use GIMP2 for graphics, uh, Audacity for audio, and uh, about my parents, they're fine with it. They've seen it, they've seen the videos, they are, you know, it's, it's cool. It's a cool thing. Uh, Daniel Lee asks, can you make a video on how you make your videos? I'm sure it will be very helpful. There is a tutorial for the making of the videos uh, in la later on in the video. So stay tuned for that. Perinci TV asks, could you ever do a map video on the Russian Civil War? Well, we would like to do that, but uh, there's a there's a problem. the 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 Russian Civil War goal on Patreon hasn't been reached, so you know, no videos yet. <laughs> Maybe it happens in the future. We don't know. Uh, Oscar Sartz asks, are you Estonian? I don't know, maybe, maybe I could be. Creepercraft MC asks for the Italian front to be covered. Steph Mod, uh, yeah, asks for the Balkan front to be covered. Perons asks for the North African campaign. Well, rest assured, we will do a three-part video series on World War II around the Mediterranean. Uh, the Balkan campaign is already out, as you can see, and uh, the second one will cover the the second video will cover the war in the desert, and the third video will cover the Italian campaign. Adam Wallace asks. I am wondering if you would be interested in covering a Canadian campaign specifically or focus on specific minor na nation involvements throughout World War II. Uh, well, we're open to do it, but uh, we really need to know if uh, there is a larger interest in that uh, topic. So let us know in the comments. What do you think? Would you like to see a video covering um, a Canadian campaign? Kyle Askin asks, do you have any future not battlefield map videos like the Deluge coming? I always enjoyed those as a change of pace. We have some events in East European history that we would like to uh, cover in, in that manner. For example, uh, uh, the time of troubles. It's like a, it's like a Game of Thrones type of situ situation, but uh, with more chaos. Other Huehue asks, will you try to map ancient wars like Roman ones? 
we are under the impression that uh, this uh, topic has already been covered, you know, by other channels. Uh, if there is a good topic, then we can cover it. If you know a good topic, then suggest it down below in the in the comments. Marco asks, how do you find information on unit positions during World War II? Is there a central database for this? No, there is no central database. There are several smaller databases, like the working maps of staff during the Second World War is the best source. Um, then uh, for the Red Army, there is a, uh, a David database in Russian, link below. The captured German maps are in the National Archives in the United States, link also below. So, Empire's Top 10 guy asks, do you have plans to expand your coverage on the war in Ukraine? But this time it has a more detailed map uh, and division numbers. Well, there's a problem. Uh, we usually use historical data or, uh, you know, uh, official, official data to get the unit uh, uh, locations. Uh, but these in Ukraine, uh, the locations and, and everything, the data is not going to be available for a long time. Uh, therefore, uh, there is no big, big video with uh, unique locations in the, in the near future. But we can do videos of uh, smaller uh, battles in Ukraine, if you, if you like. So a video about uh, fighting in the Donbass is underway, by the way, like, for instance. Gab is a pro 99 asks, will you cover World War I in depth like World War II? It's harder to cover specific fronts here, but a timeline of events is enough. Well, actually, there are other channels that all have already done something that you, some similar things that you have described. For instance, this video. Also, we don't want to make exact copies of already uh, things that have already been done. So in order to do more, uh, it would take immense amount of effort and it, would, it is such tedious work. Let's, let's say that uh, here will appear a map of World War II. It's nice. 200, somewhere around 200 uh, units. Beautifully detailed. But here there's a World War I map. And you, you will probably see somewhere around 20 units here, which is it's, it's not a lot to go on for on with. So, uh, Louis Burke asks, would it be possible to put unit strength on World War II videos, or is that too heavy? We had this idea some time ago, but the thing is that numerical strength isn't everything. Uh, it would be a good idea if numerical strength actually correlated with, uh, with the, the actual strength of the, the, the unit. But uh, in real life, there are other uh, factors that come into play when it comes to the strength of units, such as uh, the way the units are organized, bad organization for instance, lack of experience, uh, bad positioning, and uh, or maybe an element of surprise. So, uh, for the tutorial, let me show you how Tallinn, this city, was stormed by the Germans in 1941. I'm off the camera again and in my comfort zone being the little voice. First I'll show you the video and then the steps that it took to make it. In late summer of 1941, the German army had cut off the Red Army's forces around the base of the Soviet Baltic fleet in the city of Tallinn. The German force around the city was stronger and prepared to launch an assault to capture it. The main battles took place in the eastern direction where the German positions were the nearest to the city. During the first day of the assault, the Soviet regiment retreated from the first line of defense. The Germans then assaulted the second line of defense. The Soviets sent the Latvian regiment to stop them. It was soon reinforced by the Estonian Workers' Regiment and together the two regiments managed to counter-attack and regain some ground. But when the other Soviet forces began to retreat to the third defensive line, the two regiments could not break contact and were encircled and destroyed by the Germans. 
With that, the second Soviet defense line was broken in the eastern direction. Things didn't go well also in the north. Here the two NKVD regiments held the first section of the Soviet defensive line, but the section of the defense line further south was thinly manned. As a result, the Germans outflanked the Soviet defensive positions from there and reached the second Soviet defensive line. The Soviets had now hastily pulled their forces back to the second line, but the Germans had passed through it and encircled the Soviet forces by reaching the sea. The Soviets were able to fight their way out of the encirclement, but had lost a large part of their strength, and two regiments were consolidated into one. After suffering heavy losses, the Soviets now fell back to their last line of defense around Tallinn. Meanwhile, in the southern direction, things had gone much more according to the Soviet plan and their forces retreated to the second line of defense in relatively good order. But in the western direction, the Soviets had few forces and they were overrun and encircled by the Germans before reaching the second line. As a result, the Germans easily breached this line and approached the city from the west. With the second defensive line breached from the east and west, the Soviet troops in the south retreated to the third line. Instead of inflicting large losses on the Germans on the two first defensive lines as planned, the Soviets had suffered great losses themselves. Now the greatly weakened Soviet forces prepared to make an unsuccessful stand on their third line of defense. In the east there was a section which was supposed to be manned by the Latvian and Estonian regiments, but these regiments had been destroyed and there was now a gap in the Soviet lines. The Germans used it to breach the Soviet defenses and threatened to outflank the other Soviet forces. The Soviets now fell back to the very outskirts of the city. They also had to retreat into the city in the west. The Soviets could not hold out for long, so they left 10,000 soldiers to cover their retreat and loaded the rest on the ships. The ships were to travel over mostly hostile waters 300 kilometers east to Leningrad and suffered heavy losses during the trip, but some of their forces were able to escape. In this tutorial I will show you how to make the video you just saw from start to finish. The tutorial does not show all my editing techniques, but it will allow you to create a basic animated map video. Also, due to time constraints, it will be done in turbo mode and you will need to rewatch some parts to fully understand the process. First thing, what we need is a map. I found a map of the battle on Wikipedia and it shows me the area of the battle. This area is about this size on the real world map and I need to create a map which depicts this area around 1941. So I go to the National Map Archives website and find a map of this area from the 1930s. The problem is that it is in several sheets and I have to compile it together into one map. Download all the sheets you need for compiling this map. Now download and install GIMP 2. Link is in the description. Open GIMP and load map number 1 into GIMP. Now increase the canvas size to 200% to make room. Now load the map number 2 into GIMP as a new layer and place it into empty space. I will now use the select tool and transform tools. Select and delete one of the map edges. Then adjust map number 2 by using transform tools so that it would completely link up with map number 1. Ah, perfect. Now do that with all of the other map sheets until you have a proper map of the area. Now all the map sheets have been glued together. Now I will draw over some features like water, forest, roads and swamps and different layers so that they would be more easily distinguishable. Let's create some layers with the names of the features. We are going to do the same steps which we do with this little lake with other features. First we will select the layer with the water. We will use the pencil tool and the pocket fill tool. Use the pencil tool to circle the lake and then use the pocket fill tool to make it one color. Things like rivers and roads we will not circle, but we will draw them over with a pencil. Uh, we will spend 20 hours doing the same with all the other features. Now, when all has been done, I will show you the layers by making them visible. I have made the layers invisible by pressing the eye icon near them. Now, I will make them visible by pressing the same icon again. You can see layers with roads, railroads, rivers, sea, forests, swamps and towns and the original map layer as a background. From the sources, I have also added three Soviet defensive lines around the city. 
Now there is the opacity parameter for the layers, which modifies the transparency or opacity. We will adjust it for each layer so that they would be somewhat transparent and the map will look better. You can consider that we have a petal map. Export the map as JPG. Second part, the battle plan. Now we will need to make a script of the battle. For one source, we will use the war diaries of German units that took part in the battle. For the second source, we will use this book in Russian. Now we will begin making the video itself. There will be several situations in this battle and my first step will be laying out them in the map on different layers. First, let's get some icons for the units. Make a new GIMP file with 100 to 100 pixels. Make a circle and fill it with color. Use the text tool to create unit numbers. On the top part, we will make unit size symbols according to NATO symbology. Three vertical lines make a regiment. Excellent. Export as PNG. Repeat until all unit icons have been exported. Now I will import them into GIMP map file by dragging them into the window and using the move tool to place them on the map according to the sources. They will create a new layer with the image. Sometime later the units have been placed on the map. The Soviet units are red with yellow text and the German ones are white with black text. Now by using the pencil tool I will create the battle plan. As the Germans assault the town, several situations arise and for each of them I will create a separate layer with units and arrows that indicate their movement. After some work, all the situations have been mapped out. I will now make each of them visible by toggling their visibility. You can see how the German forces approach the city and it almost looks like a video. I will export each of the situation maps as a JPG. I have a good base for a video and now I will need to animate it. For this, I will need to convert the situation maps from GIMP into Blender. Blender is a free graphics software which you can download from their website. Make sure to get the version 2.75 as you will not be able to replicate these steps with other versions. Link in the description. Download. Install it. Make sure it has the import images as planes add-on. Now let's open Blender and start converting the situation maps into animation. Select the cube and delete it. Get the add menu with a combination of shift and A and select mesh. Then images as planes. Then select the JPG of the exported map. To see the map texture, choose material view from the bottom left. Now the map is not in position. It should be facing up. Select the map, go to the object tab and find the transform values. There is location, rotation and scale. Change the values in rotation to zero and the map should be facing up. Then use the letter S and mouse to scale the map to the proper size. Now go to the material tab. Find shading and check the checkbox with the text shadeless. This will disable all the fancy lighting effects. Now there is a problem. The camera is not looking properly at the map. Select the camera, go to the object tab, set the rotation values to zero and location values for X and Y also to zero. Now I will need to set the Z value, which in this situation regulates the camera zoom. Press the number zero on the numpad. Now you will see whatever the camera is seeing. Click down on the location Z value with the mouse and drag it until the camera zoom level is acceptable. Now I will need a front line. Press Shift A. Go to the curve and then select the path. With the path selected, go to Data, find Bevel and increase the depth value until you have the width of the front line you need and put the resolution to 5. Also select the shape to be 2D as it will keep the matter simple. Now I need to have the front line nice and red. Go to the Material tab. Choose New Material. Under the word Diffuse, there is a white square. Click on it and select the appropriate color of the front line, which for me is red. Check the shadeless checkbox to disable the lighting effects. This will be my front line. Now I will need to get the data to lay it out on the map. Choose the map, go to the texture tab, find image and the source field. 
open the image of the first situation. There are three red lines and the outer red line is the position of the front line at the beginning of the video. I will now position the path in a way that it will be in the same position as the outer red line on the map. Select the path and click tab. This will open the edit mode. Here you can see that the path is made up of small dots. You can select the dots with the mouse and press G to move them. Click with the mouse again to place the dot. I will move the dots so that they will be over the red line on the map. I'll start from the C. Now I have run out of dots. Select the point furthest inland. Hold down Control. Now wherever you click, a new dot will be created. Continue creating dots until you have covered the whole front line. Now the original position of the front line is ready. Go to Data, find Shape Keys, create a new Shape Key. Then select the shape, check the pin over there and then select New Shape Key from the mix. Uncheck the Relative checkbox and make sure that the interpolation for all the Shape Keys is linear. The Shape Keys are different positions of the front line and I can create animation by moving between them. More on this later. Right now I must create different shape keys for different frontline positions. First position is the start position. I will rename the shape key accordingly. The second one is the situation one. I'll rename the shape key according to that. The first shape key has already been mapped out by the original state of the front line. Now I will need to make the front line move between this front line and the situation one. Select Situation 1 Shape Key and go to the Edit Mode by pressing Tab. This frontline movement will cover the advance of the German forces, which is marked by the arrows on the map. Now I will move the points like I would expect the frontline to move, using the arrows on the map to determine that. When this is ready, press Tab to exit the Edit Mode. Now select the map, go to the Texture tab and select Situation 2 as the source. Here you can see according to the arrows that the Germans now moved slightly more into the Soviet defenses. Select the front line and with the last shape key selected, create another one by selecting new shape key from the mix. Rename it, make sure that the interpolation is linear and start moving the vertices according to the arrows. This one is relatively easy. Now it is done. In this way, I will go through all situations and move the front line accordingly. If you look at the Shape Key tab, then there are values behind every Shape Key. This value represents the evaluation time. Uncheck this pin here to let the shapes move according to the evaluation time. If you press down with mouse on the evaluation time and move it, then the front line starts to move. If you reach number 10, then the front line is in the position of Situation 1 Shape Key. If you move it to 20, it will be situation 2. By manipulating the evaluation time, I will animate the movement of the front line. By going through all of the situations and creating separate shape key for each, I will have the front line data in the program. The other thing I need is units. I will import the units just like the map. Press Shift A, then Mesh and Images as Planes. Select one of the images of units and place it on the map. Make sure to increase the location Z value by one point. Press S and scale it until it is the appropriate size. Then make a copy with it by Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Pull the unit aside, go to the Materials tab and change the texture to the next unit. Then put this unit in position. Repeat until all units are there. Now most of the data is in Blender and I can start animating. But according to what am I going to time the movements? The answer is according to the narration. Use your phone to record your narration. Now if you're something like me, then your narration, your, your narration will not be perfect and you will need some editing. Download the program Audacity, link below. Use it to cut off all the bad parts and make a nice clean narration. Then export. Now I will need to add it into Blender. Choose the video editing tab from above. Make sure the current frame is zero and pull the audio file into Blender. Now I will have to set the first and last frame of the video. It'll be the same length as the audio. The first frame is zero and for the last frame copy and paste the length of the audio. 
Now let's go back to default mode and start animating. Use the play button to listen to the audio. When you get to the part when some movement takes place, hit on pause. For animation, I will move the front line and the units. I will do that by timing the location parameter of units and the evaluation time of the front line shape case. The different shapes are determined by the evaluation time of the front line. If I click on this value and move the mouse, then the value will change and so does the shape of the front line. If I select a unit, I can click and hold one of the colored arrows and then move the object on this axis. With Blender, I can fix a value in a moment of time by hovering the mouse over the valued field and pressing the I key. This will save a keyframe, which is basically the value of this field on this exact frame. This will turn this field into a yellow color. This means that there is a keyframe in this frame. If I go to a different frame, then the field turns green, which means that there is a keyframe somewhere for this field, but not on the present frame. When you select an object, you can see all of its keyframes on the timeline below. If I move the unit and fix the setting by pressing I and press play button, then the object will move between these two frames. This is a demonstration, so let's put the object back and delete the keyframes by right clicking on the location value and then clear keyframes. First, I will animate the front line. Go to the frame where the movement starts. Select the front line, find shape keys. Make sure to unpin this checkbox to make the front line move according to the evaluation time. Find the value for the first shape key, which is zero. Type it into the evaluation time box and press I. This will fix this value for this frame. Now let's go to the frame where the front line is supposed to have moved to situation one. So type this value into the evaluation time field. Fix it by pressing letter I. Now let's go back before the movement and let's press play. See the front line is moving as I need. I can move the units the same way by fixing their location attributes between the two frames. Let's go to the frame when the movement starts. Let's go through selecting the units and fixing their location by pressing the I key. Then go to the frame when the movement ends. Move the units and fix their positions by pressing I. When I will move back and press play, then the units will move too. In one situation, one of the Soviet regiments is supposed to disappear. This is done by changing the alpha value in the texture tab and keyframing it. 100 is no transparency and 0 is fully transparent. Fix the value at 100 in the beginning and set it to 0 and fix it at the end. Now I will use the same techniques to animate the rest of the video. If I want to move the camera, I can set keyframes on its position values like the units. In this way, you can move the camera laterally and also create the zoom effect. The last thing I need to do is to set the parameters for rendering the video. Go to the Render tab and go to Output. Here, you can see the output format. I want to make a video out of this, so I choose FFMPEG video. Then go to the top of the tab and click Animation and let the magic happen. It'll now create the video and you can find it in the folder which you can set in the output tab. The default location is the TMP folder on your C drive. Wait until the render is complete and then watch the video. It seems to be all, but something feels to be missing. Ah, as the last step, subscribe to the Easter channel if you have not done so already. See you in the next video.